right, so this is just a disclaimer. We've done a lot of road tripping around Costa Rica. This is for those of you who want to do the ultimate Costa Rica road trip. We have been doing it. We've gone to Nicoya. We've gone to the Pacific side, north, south, La Fortuna, Cloud Forest. But we did miss Monteverde. So just be aware that what we're about to show you is not going to have Monteverde, which is a very premier destination. We just didn't include that. All right, guys, this is where we're going to start here in San Jose, which is the capital. Most people originate their travel in Costa Rica here in San Jose. We're going to show you guys this area, and then we're going to actually head through the mountains to La Fortuna in Alajuela. Now, this is a saying that I heard from locals, tour guides. They say the best thing to do when you get to San Jose is leave San Jose. What they basically mean is when you come to Costa Rica, you arrive in San Jose, spend 24 to 48 hours, and then start exploring throughout the country. Not too much to see in terms of beauty in San Jose compared to what you're going to get when you get out there into the rainforest, the cloud forest, the beaches. San Jose is right in the middle of the country. It works for a commercial hub, but it doesn't have all the beauty that you're going to get in other parts of Costa Rica. Now about two and a half hours north of San Jose is La Fortuna. Like I said, it's in the province of Alajuela. And here you're going to get lots of rain and a beautiful volcano called Arenal, which you might not always see it when you're out here because it's constantly covered by clouds, especially during the winter time of year, which is the months of November to December and January. In La Fortuna, up in the trees, you will see sloth, in particular the three-toed sloth. They also have another very exotic, unique bird here, which is the toucan. I saw several toucans when I was in. Uh, the area around La Fortuna, but what La Fortuna is really known for is the geothermal also known as termales So you have eco termales you have the free uh, Eco termales area that you can go to which is the hot springs uh, They also have waterfall hikes where you can go down into the deep depths of the cloud forest And it never hurts to pull off to the side of the road and get some fresh fruit from a vendor uh, one thing I would like to say about getting around Costa Rica, we did a mix between a rental car, we also did tours, uh, we also hired a private van, so how you get around can depend on a variety of different uh, transportation. We also even use side-by-sides and 4 by 4s which you'll see later on in the film. And we will ask our tour guides to comment below uh, so that they can uh, make it possible for you to reach out for them uh, and give you their number or contact information uh, in various different places. So after a great time in La Fortuna, it's time that we start to transit now across Alajuela over towards Tamarindo, but on the way we stop at a volcano. So here we are in front of the Airball de la Paz, which is the tree of peace. This is a Sabal tree, but if you come up right here, you can walk basically by, right by the trunk here. I mean, this is just one side of the trunk, and you can see it's like a room. Such a big tree, it's a Sabal tree, but check out how big it is. Think about all the animals that must live up there. And these Costa Rica rainforests are teeming with flora, fauna, and natural and wildlife. And where we're at now is actually called Rio Celeste. The reason they call it Rio Celeste is because the sulfuric acid from the volcano below creates this blue colored water. It's really beautiful. Here we are at the Par Parque Nacional Volcan Tenario, or the National Park of the Volcano Tenario. Let's go take a look inside of this jungle. So 
down here at Rio Celestine, which is the Blue River here, it smells like sulfur. And you can see the hot liquid magma below is boiling the water right here. You wouldn't want to get in the water there, it's too hot, but that's what creates the hot spring. So here we are at the end of the trail. Something interesting happens here. The white water from upstream, regular river water, turns blue right here. And if you look right down below me, you can see the white water meet the blue water. After a hike like that, we definitely built up an appetite. And thanks to our guide, Larry, here, we're getting some cassado. This is actually carne and salsa with beans, rice, plantain, and salad. On this part of the trek, we were actually being driven around in a private van by Larry, who we will ask to comment below, so do check the comments. And we finally made it to Tamarindo. This is actually going to be our very first beach destination that we're going to show you. Here in Tamarindo, it's popular because it's just south of the beach of Papagayo, but people like to do booze cruises here, sunset cruises, ride horses on the beach, or just go up into the jungle and explore with a side-by-side. And here we are just doing some snorkeling. Uh, we're actually heading out to a private beach area that you can't access with the road. So you have to be on a boat to get to that beach. But there's many beaches all up and down this coastline. After about three days in Tamarindo, we decided to head south down to the Nicoya Peninsula, which actually ended up being one of my favorite places, although picking a favorite in Costa Rica is kind of hard to do. We ended up going down to Santa Teresa. The drive took about three hours to go from Tamarindo down here to the southern part of Nicoya, which is where Santa Teresa is. This big long beach that we're at right here is Playa Santa Teresa. It's a long beach you can almost ride your bike, jog. Santa Teresa is known for surfing, but also lots of exploration to be done down here. And we definitely took full advantage of that, especially once we got the side by side. We went all the way over to Montezuma and checked out everything in between. And as usual, plenty of rivers to explore and waterfalls. Costa Rica has many, 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 many waterfalls. Oh, and don't forget about hanging bridges. And just between you and I, if I had to pick between Santa Teresa or Montezuma for relaxation and just chilled out vibes, I'm going Montezuma. And all across Costa Rica, as you heard that man say, pura vida, which means pure life. Very common phrase used in Costa Rica. And the wildlife does change down here. They have a lot more monkeys, in particular the howler monkeys, which you hear at night or in the mornings or sometimes just walking through the jungle. By the way, if this is your first time watching Island Hopper TV, we have many videos from this series that we made across Costa Rica. So check out our playlist from Costa Rica and subscribe to this channel. And what we ended up doing out here in Montezuma was actually catching a speedboat over to Tortuga Island, which is one of the premier places to actually go hang out, snorkel in all of Costa Rica. So do look that up when you get out here.
and you can see beautiful colored water out here in the Pacific Ocean Islands, just off the coast of Nicoya. But fresh food, and in order to get out here, you would probably end up talking to one of the several tour companies in the area or at your hotel asking them how to get out here. And after about five days in Nicoya, we crossed the Gulf of Nicoya on a barge. You can actually drive your rental car right on here, which we ended up doing. So by this point, we had a rental car and we ended up heading towards Punta Reynas and then on to Hako. All right, guys, we've made it down to Hako. This is a popular town just outside of San Jose. It's right there on the beach. Popular with surfers, backpackers, hostels, a uh, really big tourist destination, I would say, Hako right here. When you go to San Jose, they're always going to recommend you either go to Hako or Manuel Antonio, but Hako seems to be the most popular place people end up going. But you can see it's really built up, lots of commercial infrastructure here that you don't get in other parts of Costa Rica. And nearby Hako, they actually have a river with lots of crocodiles. You can actually see them from this bridge here. So this tour here is $35 a person. Uh, you can see we're going out on the boat right here. Let's go. Along with crocodiles, you obviously see plenty of variety of birds out here. Costa Rica has plenty of bird variety, I'll tell you. But as with anything, I asked, what about those cows? Do the crocodiles ever grab them? And apparently the crocodiles do feast on a cow every once in a while. All right, anyway, let's head south now towards Uvita and Dominical. So down here in Uvita, they have these mysterious stones. They're kind of circular, but these are pre-Columbian indigenous uh, created stones. I don't know exactly why they're here. Uh, I don't think anyone really does because they're pre-Columbian. That means before 1400, but they're all across this area. You could see it's fairly circular. We are at the Catarata, which is waterfall, Esmeralda, Uvita. So this is the waterfall of Uvita, Esmeralda. We're gonna go inside here and see just how pretty this place is. Yeah, so here we are, there's several pools. There's a pool down here, a pool right here, and more pools up that way. If you look way off in the distance, you can see a really tall waterfall. So we've now come north towards Dominical, but before we get to Dominical, we're in Dominicalito. This is a really popular surfing beach right here. Once we got to Dominical, we actually saw the macaws, or Cabo Rojo, also known as guacamaya, parrot.
I just bought this uh, sarong, this blanket. Uh, it works for uh, a scarf. You know, if I need to protect my head, something like this. I mean, you know, I'll wrap it any which way, right? But uh, it also works as a bath towel after getting out of the waterfalls, the ocean. Uh, it's better to have one of these because I don't want a towel. So something like this works perfect. I got it for 12,000 colones, which is about $18. Look at this club sandwich right here. Chicken, steak, yummy. All right guys, here we are at Serene, or Siren, however you wanna say it. Glamping experience right here in Costa Rica, so we're gonna show you what it's like to glamp right here in the very southern part of this beautiful country. And for those of you who don't know what glamping is, it's glamorous camping. And it really is glamorous. They even have an air conditioner in here. We stayed a total of two nights here. It was $100 a night for a room. We got three different tents and it's right there on the beach. We had the place to ourselves at night. So the jacuzzi was all ours. Really an awesome experience. Can't wait to go back. Right here in Uvita, they have Marino Balina, which is the whale's tail. It's this rock beach that you can head out to, peninsula with sand on each side. Really a cool place, let's show you. I would say the best time to go here is during low tide for sure, but also at sunset. If low tide and sunset are lining up, go then. I got some cheap frijo again. All right, guys, we've made it to Manuel Antonio, one of the best places in all of Costa Rica to see wildlife. Manuel Antonio is the national park, but the town nearby is known as Capos. The area is known worldwide by Instagrammers because of these airplane hotels or airplane restaurants that they have, uh, both of which end up on Instagram. This one here is called El Avion. And down here, it's very common to see sloth, the two-toed sloth and the three-toed sloth, which looks like Chewbacca in the face, they say. But also, you will see several different monkeys down here, including the howler monkey, spider monkey, and some other ones that might just pop up along the way. <laughs> All right, so after a long time hanging out in Punta Arenas, over a week, we start heading back inland across Costa Rica. This time we're heading to Cape Sales National Park. That's where the green bird is. We ended up actually taking a off-road dirt road through the mountains, which ended up being a little bit more crazy than I was anticipating. Let's just say that. It was beautiful waterfalls along the way, but it did get a bit hairy up here, I must say. road gets rough and wet and that's not good when you have a four cylinder and as I was looking at the map and realizing that I still had about an hour worth of driving on a dirt road as rain and clouds were rolling in and the road was getting even more wet yes I was white knuckling it and at this point we were high up in the mountains clouds everywhere, low visibility, and I would say if you do come to Costa Rica, don't really try to go off-road in the cars like we did in this case because I was concerned. 
And after about two and a half hours of white knuckling it, we finally arrived in the beautiful Cape Soles National Park. High altitude, it does get chilly here at night. So we've come to the Cape Sol Valley here and uh, we're staying at San Grave, which is a beautiful uh, eco hotel uh, right here in the valley. Uh, we're looking for the green bird. If you guys see it and we show you, that means we got lucky. But right now it's dinner time, it's happy hour and uh, great burgers, let's do this. mountains up here in Cape Solis National Park are pristine. It's just a very beautiful, relaxing experience. We only stayed two days up here, but I look forward to going back there. And the hotels that we stayed at, very accommodating and friendly. And the second night we stayed at Hotel Suenos del Bosque Lodge. Very friendly staff there. And as usual, we decided to go check out the waterfall that was nearby because it's Costa Rica. Many, many waterfalls. And after a good time in the valley, we decided that it was time to head all the way across Costa Rica, through Cartago, San Jose, and to the Caribbean side for the first time. The road going out to the Caribbean side is currently being built up and modernized. Right now, it does take a long time to get there, but hopefully in a year or two, it's going to be faster to get over there. Uh, so by the time you're watching this, you might be able to get on the new road to go to the Caribbean, which is faster. It did take about three and a half hours to get from San Jose to Limon, which is the capital. But we ended up heading down to Puerto Viejo after Cahuita. This is the area in the southernmost part, right next to Panama. many beaches down here like Playa Chiquita or Playa Manzanillo, but there's also a national park down here. Basically, if you went any further south, about 30 miles, you'd be in Bocos del Toro, Panama. So that gives you an idea of what kind of landscape you're dealing with.
Many people would say that the Caribbean side and the Pacific side are different. Uh, the main differences being that the Pacific side seems to have more animals available. Uh, the Caribbean side tends to be more flat, not as much mountains or waterfalls nearby. Uh, also, they say that the Pacific side is more touristy and more built up than the Caribbean side. In other words, more corporate structures, hotels, etc. You won't really get the corporate stuff on the Caribbean side. And that's a wrap for Costa Rica. You guys are gonna love this place. Definitely go around everywhere you can. See you guys on the next one. And I did place two other Costa Rica videos here. So do watch those or uh, subscribe to the channel. Hope to see you guys on the next one. We are off to Guatemala.